Blender 4.4 added a new feature for animation called slotted actions, and I feel like it's not getting enough attention. Now, it's not as flashy as some of the other features we've gotten, but this is one of the most practical and exciting features I've seen in many updates. And if you stick around to the end of the video, I'll tell you where you can download some free project files I just posted. So let's dive into what slotted actions are and why they're so important. Here, I have an old project file. This is from one of my most popular YouTube tutorials where I show you how to do a simple facial animation rig, free files included. I'll link to that in the description below if you're interested. But take a look at how messy this project is by default. This is one very simple animation, and yet I have all of these actions. And if you look up here in my nonlinear action editor, you can see that I have just a ton of strips here. Now, if you don't know, the nonlinear action editor is a editor where you can use strips and kind of move them around to edit together animations. I have a full tutorial on that, but today we're going to be talking about slotted actions specifically and how to make this cleaner and easier to use. So here we are in 4.4 and let's talk about some adjustments they've made to the UI to account for slotted actions. So if I come down here to the action editor here, you will now see that next to the action clip, I also have a slot editor here where I can assign and name various slots. Up here in the NLA editor, you can see that when I select an action, not only will I see the animation data for the action clip there, but I can also see the slot here as well. Now, other places you can access it are on the individual object attributes. So let's click an object here. We can see here that we have the material tab and there's now an animation tab there with these same options. Here we have a data tab and likewise, we now have the action slots there as well. And up here under the object properties, we have the animation slot here as well. Now you might be wondering why is there three animation sections under the single object here? And that's because previously when we end up with all of these action layers, we have ones that are for the objects and every individual object and for the mesh data and for the shader data. Well, with this object here and having all these animation categories, we can essentially go to each one of these and all assign it to the action clip. Now I know this might be complicated, just to explain. So let's look at an example of actually doing this. So I've gone ahead and deleted all the animation data here so that we can start from scratch. So let's go ahead here and we're going to start with the body here. I'm just gonna turn on auto keyframes and I'm going to insert a keyframe there and move over here. Now we're going to call this action character. And for here, let's call this body because this is just the body animation we have down here. So now what we have is an action clip and we have one slotted action for body. And this slotted action is going to hold all the information and animation that goes on this body part here. Now, typically when doing a character animation, you would have a rig and all of that data would be stored on one rig, but this was a super simple animation that didn't need a rig. And it actually serves as a better example of the power of slotted actions because there are so many individual pieces. So next let's say the head. So I start the head right here. So I'm going to do that. And then as they come over to frame 10, I want the head to rotate this way. So now you can see that I have this, which has its own action called face action, but I don't want that. I want this facial animation to sit under the character action. So I'm actually going to undo that and start us back over to just a character action. And instead what I'm going to do is when I add animation to this character's head, I'm going to grab this head, I'm going to come over here under the action editor, and I'm going to switch this to character. Now you can also do this down over here, but I prefer to do it up in the action editor. So I'm just going to click character there. And now we're going to click a new slot. So I'm going to call this head. And then what I can do is insert a keyframe there, move forward, insert a keyframe there. And now you can see that there's no new actions. And instead we have various slots here, but if I move back and forth, you can see that I've kept both animations. So you can already see how that's a bit cleaner, but there was plenty of ways to do this just by rigging your character or being a bit more organized in your project. But what we can do now is we can take different object types and also put them under the same action. So let me show you how to do that. Now, if you aren't familiar with this original tutorial, the way I set up the simple face rig is that this is actually just a plane with an image sequence on it, and you're just animating the offset of the image sequence here. So then you would just insert keyframes and kind of change the frame. The problem being that this is a shader keyframe. So when I insert a keyframe here, it's going to create a new action, which is focused on a shader tree node, which is not what we want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and undo that and get rid of that. And what we can do instead is we'll grab our plane here. And if we come over here under the material tab, 
You can see that down here under the animation, we have options to select our action here. So if I click this, I can choose for the shader node tree that I want it to be under the character. Now down here, if I click new, I'm going to call this facial animation. And now you can see that over here under the action editor, it's actually appeared all under our character animation here. Now, if I right click and insert a keyframe here, that will appear there. So then I can move forward and say that once he gets to this position, I wanna change his face to be happy. And I'm just gonna to toggle a hold keyframe there. And now we see that the character moves forward and has a hold keyframe. And we can see that all this is occurring on the same action. Now, if you recall before, doing this simple animation had crazy amounts of actions and was getting us a really ugly NLA editor. So let's look at what our NLA editor looks like now. So I'm gonna come up here and switch over to the Enial edit editor here. And you can see here that now everything is succinct and in one action. If you remember before, everything was varying links and moving all around. And now everything's in one point here. And another advantage here is that you can see that if I grab these, it'll update across all these actions. So just a much cleaner way to animate and work, making it easier to work with the NLA editor. Now, as I said, I have a full tutorial on the NLA editor where I walk through how to use it, all the ins and outs. It's an incredibly powerful animation tool. And what I love is that you can actually kind of save animation libraries or use motion capture data, mix it together and produce animations a lot faster. But I'd like to show you one more great example of where the new slotted actions are useful. So when working on my short film, Watermelon Girl, it was pretty common practice that when I was doing complex camera animation moves, I would have the animated camera and animate its properties, including the lens, the depth of field, the focus distance, the object. And then I would oftentimes attach my camera to either a crane rig or a empty and have additional data there. So I might, for example, use the empty to move the camera around the scene, but then have a noise animation on the position of the camera. As you can imagine, this got pretty messy within the nonlinear editor and kind of like my action setup. So let's look at how that can be advantageous here to use slotted actions. So if you start doing more film production in Blender, you're gonna see that this is a very common setup which is that you have a camera here and it is directly parented to a empty. So this is called cam control. What this does is two things. One, it allows me to move my camera around the scene without inserting animation data. So if I just need to slightly reposition the camera but wanna keep all the animation, this is a simple way to do it. The other thing it allows me to do is more complex camera moves. As I said, I can add noise to all the position on here and then use this to kind of get me a constant and accurate movement. But let's look at how we can assign these things on slotted actions. So I'm gonna grab the camera here. I'm going to press the K key for a keyframe and I'm gonna do location and keyframes. You see here that we get an action of camera action and that it has been attached to the slot of camera. Now let's say that I wanna go ahead and animate the lens and I wanna animate from my focal length of 50 to 100 millimeters. So I'll come up here under the camera tag, click insert here, and you'll see that in this instance, it's already automatically assigned to the camera action. If I come down here to the animation tab, you can see it's set up to the camera action. We can just call this lens, and then we will have our own slot there where it says lens under the camera. So previously I was showing you with multiple objects and things, but when you're keyframing multiple attributes on the same object, it will automatically slot. So that's what's really nice about this feature is that for the most part, unless you're doing some unorthodox things, it's going to automatically work for you without you having to assign or label much. But let's look at how we can go ahead and then add this empty here. So let's say that I want this empty so that I can also move and control the camera from a different angle around the scene. So I'm going to grab this here. I'm going to come over to the object here. And the reason I'm using these object properties is because these location and transforms will be on the object properties. So we can just grab the camera action up here, or you can grab it down here, whichever you prefer. And then I'm going to click new, and we're going to call this cam control for the slotted action. Then what we can do is grab this, press K, location and rotation. And now we have a full little slotted action rig setup where we can move our camera through the scenes and everything will all be animated into the same action, keeping it nice and clean and easy to alter. Now, as I said, if you stick around to the end of the video, I had a free project file to pass off. So I recently did this video partnered with Fiverr 
and had some other artists do some models of my characters and then I kind of textured them and showed how. But I'm giving away this model for free, so feel free to download that in the description if you want. And of course, remember I mentioned a few tutorials earlier in the video, so feel free to check those out as well.